Oh, talk about Americans refusing to see past the lie. Look at that face. Ugh, disgusting. But an awful lot of Americans go, yay, it's Bill Gates. He's so successful. I want my son to be just like him. I missed this, and I want to thank a subscriber who uh, left this in a comment underneath my recent video, Bill Gates funding MIT development of micro implants to automatically give babies vaccines. Great. So, parents, if you uh, decline, you may have your baby with a micro implant in it and your baby is going to get vaccinated anyway. This is the world that we are coming to. Oh, don't think that you are going to have choice forever. Child abuse climbs after Friday report cards. How unbelievably sad child abuse climbs after Friday report cards. Yeah, beat, beat that child. That's a good way to get those grades a little bit higher, you know, from a B to an A. New York City kids forced to start kindergarten before age five? Five. Well, they also had this program before the age of three. Yes, get those kids as early as you possibly can into the indoctrination centers, and those children will be the child of the state, not the parents. What is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? Oh, student truancy can spell $1,000 fine and jail for parents. Atlanta parents face a $1,000 fine and up to 60 days in jail when their students skip school and this was under a 2009 ordinance. City officials say they now plan to enforce. Well, this was 2011. Do you think that they have repealed that law? No, they haven't. Here, Atlanta Journal, uh, Journal Constitution found students in virtually every county had their licenses yanked because of missed school days. This in Gwinnett the state's largest school system. They had the most absence-related license suspensions in 2010. 2,269 out of the statewide total in Georgia, 12,000? 12, 12,974 licenses were suspended for missing school. Yeah, you live in a free country. Ugh, five unexcused absences, and a parent can be fined up to $100 and sentenced to 30 days in jail or community service. Nothing like making your residents work for the state any which way they can. This is sad. Brooks County, Pennsylvania. A mother died in jail while serving a 48-hour sentence handed down because she couldn't pay her children's truancy fines, which came to $2,000. Are you saying, wow? This was 2014. Here, watch this. Muskogee High School students upset over new changes to their lunch policy. Hundreds have now signed a petition to add more time to eat. Others have complained on Facebook that time between classes was also cut short. Two Works For You reporter Lorraine Callender spoke to the principal about the contentious start to the year. It's the power of social media. Within days, hundreds of comments and reaction to a post about students creating petitions upset over some changes made at school. But the Muskogee High School principal says some of these allegations aren't true. The new school year at Muskogee High is off to a rocky start. 
Students concerned over the school's change to lunchroom policies, shortening lunch from 25 to 21 minutes and not allowing students to wander around. 25 minutes isn't even enough time for every kid to get lunch and then be, for, be forced to sit down when there's not enough room. Frustration turning into action. Sophomore Abigail Cochran starting a petition at school, already collecting 400 signatures. Everybody would have just went on and still be, you know, angry about what they did at the school. But Principal Kim Fleek says the average 700 students during lunch periods have other options besides buying lunch from four lines in the cafeteria. Circle Drive in the cantina area, which will allow students standing room if they choose to do that with their friends during lunches and breakfasts. Fleek says they don't want students standing or moving around during lunch because of safety concerns. Just to make sure that aisles are clear, that doorways aren't blocked, and, and that everyone can see what's going on in the cafeteria at any given time. Another concern gaining attention on Facebook, students saying their pastime between classes was cut from five to three minutes, making it impossible to be on time. We have to push through crowds of people just to hurry and get to our class just to maybe be on time, but not likely. But when we went to interview the principal, the class bell rang at 1256 and then at 101, confirming the pastime to be five minutes. I'm not real sure where that, where that came from. I, possibly just the fact that we're just getting started and getting back into the group of school and, and it seems that it's shortened, but our, our passing periods are still five minutes of time. Another concern with students being fined for being late to class, charges rising up to $250. We'll take a look at this policy coming up at 6. $250 if you're late to class? Are you kidding? That's like, oh, should I say outrageous? Yeah, it is really outrageous. Um, let me see, what else do we have? Student arrested for too many absences. It's my fault, exactly. It's not my 14-year-old son's fault because he don't have a, a car to get himself there. Stephanie, who doesn't want to use her last name, says she's upset. Her son, a student at Alice Robertson Junior High, was treated like a criminal. Handcuffed. Could visibly see marks on his wrist. And taken to the Community Intervention Center, or CIC, located behind the Muskogee County Jail Wednesday for missing too many days of school. Even if it was 20, they shouldn't have handcuffed him in front of everybody. She says most of the days her son missed were excused with doctor's notices. As for the others. Kids get sick and they don't always have to have a doctor's note. Four absences in a four week period will lead to a possible citation. And that is Oklahoma State statute. It's been on the books for decades now. Muskogee Public School says they can't comment on specific cases, but their director of communication, Steve Braun, says on the fifth absence, a citation is issued and parents must sign, which he says they typically do. This parent comes, signs the citation, and goes about their day. If they don't sign, Braun says, students are taken to the CIC, where parents are forced to pick up their kids and sign the citation. I am willing to take responsibility for the days that he did miss. Stephanie says she understands but believes the school could have handled it a different way. Them arresting him and putting handcuffs on him and leaving marks on him and traumatizing him in my perspective is unacceptable. Covering news that matters, I'm Paris Holmes, unacceptable. Fox 23 News. Unacceptable? It's unacceptable? Kids being arrested because they've missed four Four school days out of four weeks? Oh, my God. Uh, well, I would have been arrested a lot as a kid because, yeah, I was one that cut school often. I started cutting school in first grade. They'd have me in handcuffs in first grade taking me to the police station. But four, four missed days in four weeks. The, uh, by the way, this is in Oklahoma. Um, are schools turning into prisons? Yeah. Yeah. But how did that happen? Without the majority of Americans consenting to that, the parents.
and those who work for the schools and the teachers and that, you know, Weasley guy who's the public relations um, guy for this uh, school district. You know, these are the people who keep the wheel turning. So many people just blame government. Those government officials, they're bad. The police, bad. We're all in it together. This didn't manifest without our consent. After a two-year legal battle, school let students pass out the U.S. Constitution. Yeah, in L.A. So, is this not outrageous? Why isn't the school teaching students about the United States Constitution? Do you think, do you think they don't want the students knowing much about their own country? Here, this, oh my God, I, I'm telling you, people have gone morally insane. They've been gutted. A hit and run involving an Aldean ISD policeman. The officer is accused of hitting a woman with his patrol car and then leaving the scene. Channel 2 reporter Phil Archer spoke to the woman who survived that hit and run accident. Phil? Yeah, you know, investigators allege that off-duty officer not only hit the woman with his patrol car and then drove away, but then later under questioning tried to divert blame. The video is stark. It shows a 51-year-old woman being hit by an Aldine ISD police car. The driver doesn't stop to help. The car simply drives away. I put up to the He took back around, rolled down the window, and said, I'll be back. We took off that way. It just left me on the ground. I Alice Lamone survived with minor injuries. The driver who hit her, according to DA investigators, is Aldine School Police Officer Omario Gothright, a three-year veteran of the Aldine ISD Police Department. He's now charged with hit and run. Investigators say Gothright returned to the accident scene about an hour later in a different car with his girlfriend after ditching his patrol car at her apartment. He left his patrol car at a different location, came back with a female who initially uh, sought to take the blame for driving and running this woman down. Assistant DA Sean Terre says the couple's alleged cover story fell apart when Gothright was confronted with witness statements and video from a nearby store. The video. Don't Americans realize that there are surveillance cameras all over the place and this idea of lying and then diverting blame to somebody else, it really does not work anymore. But a police officer does a hit and run. Now, if you were driving and you struck a human being, what do you think your instinct would tell you to do? Would it tell you to hit the gas and go? Or would it tell you to slam on the brake and get out of your car to make sure that that person is okay? Well, the one with a uh, solid moral core will hit the brake, get out of the car, do everything to make sure the person's okay. The one who has a shaky moral core may even think, should I go? The one with no moral core says, eh, hit the gas and get out of here. Um, we don't have a lot of Americans who are healthy, sane, moral people. And that is one of the reasons why we are living this nightmare. County detention officer is under investigation connected to an incident at a bar on the northwest side. Yeah, uh, our top story tonight, Fox San Antonio's Ariana Lubelli live outside D.O. Bar on 1604 and Chase Hill Boulevard with more on what happened there. Ariana. Well, the bouncer at this bar tells me that deputies threatened to, quote, shoot up the place and kill people. They then walked over to this taco cabana across the street and allegedly caused trouble over there.
Tuesday, College Night at Dole Bar was interrupted when a group of off-duty deputies allegedly became belligerent while drinking. When we gave them the water, they threw it on the ground and got really upset. At that point, we told them, well, you can no longer stay here, you've got to leave, so we kicked them out. Bouncer Josh Cornell says the deputies were highly intoxicated and became enraged when the DJ wasn't playing the music they wanted. They're trying to order people around and tell people what they could and couldn't do just because they're a Bear County Sheriff. Cornell says things escalated when bouncers refused to let the deputies back in. But they said that they were going to come back and shoot up the bar and kill people. That deputy is now on unpaid administrative leave. He's also been stripped of his credentials and department issued equipment. I don't know, hard. Do you think that if you did this, you were not a police officer, you wouldn't be in jail? So these deputies just unpaid leave? Really? Wow. Okay, well, it's yet another, you know, uh, piece of evidence that people who put on uniforms and badges really do think that they can do whatever the hell they want to do. And that's an attitude that really needs to change. Uh, Florida deputy sheriff kills three relatives than himself. What is going on? A deputy sheriff in South Florida took his own life at a near a school um, here. This sheriff radioed in to the main channel before 7 a.m. He radioed in to sheriff's office, um, alerted other deputies that he had caused harm to his family at two separate locations and said that he was going to kill himself at the Plant City High School at 7 a.m. so uh, children are arriving to school. Well, without knowing any information, one could... Look, suicide is <laughs> increasing drastically in this country. It's up 33% from 1999. 47,000 Americans committed suicide in 2017, causing the country to hit a 50-year record. It's the 10th leading cause of death in America. Some call it a national health crisis. Some? All right. What are the reasons? The reasons are um, financial relationship problems. What else? The frequencies, psychiatric medications that induce suicidal ideation that leads the person to act on that ideation that they have going on in their brain. But it's also loss of connection and the manifestation of meaninglessness. You know, when when we have everybody staring at their phone, everybody lying to one another, um, you, you are pretty much alone. And we're not isolated human beings. We're social human beings. You know, so when we can't find connection, um, when we fall into a situation that we need help, but we're too afraid to ask for help and because we're going to get shamed or we have nowhere to turn because the family is destroyed, community is destroyed, friendship is destroyed. Where do you turn? This number is going to increase greatly, but the frequencies also are causing an awful lot of this madness that we are seeing all over the place. But that he kills himself at a high school as high school is starting, well, that's, there's something very wrong here. And he mentions that he alluded to some type of financial and health issue. And he said, 
to these deputies that he was talking to that he loved the sheriff's office. Clearly he didn't love his relatives. <laughs> um, just want to show you this. This uh, is how mainstream media works. So these yellow vest protests in France. French media caught doctoring images of yellow vest protesters for televised news. This actually says in English, Macron resign. That was the real image. And then when it got on the news, wow, that's a clean poster board, isn't it? They whited out the resign part. Makes it look like there's a lot of French for Macron, not against him. Oh, how our mainstream media, the lies, the deception. I guess, you know, all of these people who are part of changing the world to something incredibly evil, well, when you're not going to achieve your ends by behaving in an ethical manner, then you have to resort to lying and cheating. Oh, boy. Well, I just wanted to show you that we're in trouble. You know, that schools are now actually arresting people, fining parents for students missing school. Um, you know, all of this should really show you that we uh, do not live in a free society. The police states here and unfortunately due to the lack of protests here in our country, um, due to an awful lot of Americans that really don't care too much about much, then we're going to see more and more of this. I think the rapidity of change is going to be head spinning, even more head spinning than it is already. And it's going to be head spinning uh, not down the continuum towards happy and free and joyful and positive, but on the other end of the continuum. It's really sad what has happened to this country.